Hello, my name is Melanie Jacobson and I'm going to be going through the details of the Green Building Ordinance in the following slide deck. As you go through, please note down any questions that you might have and let us know how we can help you through this process. Okay, in this video, we're going to be going over a brief overview of the Green Building Submittals Timeline. We'll be doing a forms and uh, worksheets demo and reviewing the enforcement process for the Green Building Ordinance on non-residential projects. So in this slide, you'll notice the timeline for a typical non-residential project. On the left-hand side, you'll notice the planning and entitlements phase, and this is only projects subject to planning review. Some projects will come in right at permitting um, and won't be subject to the planning, but if the project is subject to planning, then we will need to see preliminary sheets included, included in the planning application. And that is included in the form of a GB1 sheet. Similarly, uh, at the permit plan check phase, we'll need to see the final version of the green building sheets included in the permit plans. Then once we get to inspections, there are three different phases of requirements included for enforcement. So there is a required green building pre-construction meeting. There is a required green building incremental verification. And that's only for requirements subject to incremental verification. So there are a limited number of those. So you'll need to check the green building inspection guidelines to determine if your project meets those requirements. And then finally, the green building final inspection um, and projects need to reference the, city, the city's green building inspection guidelines uh, that are shown on the slide. Then after occupancy, there was a required um, energy star portfolio man manager benchmark that is required to be submitted to the city. And those, are those requirements are outlined on the website. This slide shows a demo of the green building for non-residential new construction and renovation compliance verification form. The way this form works is it includes all the project triggers on the left hand column and the requirements identified in the middle column along with the compliance schedule and instructions on the right hand side. Similarly, this is the green building GB1 sheet which is shown in an Excel document and needs to be included in the permit plans as identified on the green building verification form. So we'll go ahead and do a demo of that. Okay, now this is a demo of the green building GB1 sheet for tier two non-residential projects. You'll notice this is in Excel, so easily used by a number of different disciplines. And um, we have all the provisions identified here, as well as the required signatures on the right-hand side. So we'll go ahead and zoom in to give you an understanding of some of the requirements here. So the requirements listed on the left-hand side identify mandatory requirements, tier two mandatory prerequisites, and then elective measures. The number of required elective measures are identified down below. The code provision title is listed in this column, as well as the code section requirement and reference in the column just to the right. The GB1 sheet components, as we just outlined in the demo, show the different requirements for both mandatory and elective requirements. So the mandatory requirements or tier prerequisites from the appendix are listed under mandatory. The tier elective requirements are listed under electives and these are located in the appendix. The code section reference within the green building code are listed to the right. When there are numbers only, this references the main body of the code. When numbers are preceded with an A, this means that provision is from the appendix. And note that tier one and tier two mandatory requirements also have an A. So just keep that in mind that in some cases, items with an A are mandatory. Anything that references a local um, reference or ordinance will be listed as a, with an ordinance number or Palo Alto Municipal Code. This slide outlines the legend for the GB1 sheet components. So 
Items listed as a Y are identified as yes, the provision applies, and N outlines not applicable or not triggered. And we ask that you include a reference within the construction documents, and that's listed here. And these are for your reference only, just to provide, um, provided to help make enforcement predictable for you as the applicant. This slide outlines the green building page that outlines the compliance process, a summary of the history of green building in Palo Alto, as well as other enforcement resources. The green building compliance page outlines, uh, defines the detailed requirements for projects at each phase. So make sure to visit this page to understand the requirements that will be available for, or required for each phase. This slide outlines resources for the applicant teams, both at the state and local level. And now we'll go into the procedures for plan check. This slide outlines the procedures uh, to prepare for your plan check. The applicant team will be required to include the GB sheets and review that sheet and complete using the stand standard green building conditions found on the web page. The plan checker will be responsible for reviewing the GB sheets within the plan check process and review using the standard green building conditions so everybody's looking at the same document. This is an example of the standard conditions for non-residential projects and it's a very detailed conditions um, document that outlines the requirements. Thank you so much for listening to the non-residential green building submittals requirement and please let us know if you have any questions.